When I was 18, I worked as a lifeguard in Toronto, Canada. I had been doing this job for two years, and worked at a lot of different pools. I had picked up this shift that was every Friday night, 6.30 to 10, during the winter season. Also known as the loser shift for people who don't have anything fun to do on Friday nights. In early December, I was the only one left in the pool building on my Friday shift at about 10.30. Now, the pool building is attached to the main community center that has an ice rink and gym, but the pool building has a completely different entrance and parking lot than the community center. Anyway, I was about to lock up and drop the key off at the main building when I saw a girl waiting outside in the parking lot. She was about ten, and I recognized her as one of the people who came for free swim during my shift. I was just about to ask her if she wanted to come wait inside because it was freezing, when the phone rang. I went back into the staff office to answer the call, and after I was done, the girl was gone. I assumed her parents had come to pick her up or something. I then grabbed my stuff, turned off the lights, and locked the door to drop the key off and then walk home. I was walking across the parking lot for about 15 meters when I heard a faint muffled scream. I turned around quickly and saw a truck idling at the far end of the parking lot. It was kind of far away, and I had to squint my eyes to see what was happening. To my horror, I realized a man was bent over and struggling to get something into his trunk. I moved a little closer towards the truck and saw that the man was wearing all black and had a scarf covering his face. Then I saw a girl's arm try to hold the trunk open while the man was trying to shut it. She had her legs sticking out of the trunk, kicking and holding the door open. I recognized her as the girl that was waiting outside before. Two seconds later, I realized what was going on. I started panicking and looking for my phone in my bag. The parking lot was completely empty other than that one truck. It was dimly lit and the ground was very icy. I looked up once I found my phone in the bottom of my bag. The man stopped struggling to get the girl into the trunk and turned to me. As quickly as possible, I turned around and started running back toward the pool door. I looked over my shoulder while I was cautiously running, trying not to slip on the ice. And he was charging towards me. I was about ten meters away from the door and he had gotten significantly closer. I started screaming, but it was hard to scream while running. I got the door open and struggled to get the keys out of my pocket. He was about five meters away when I unlocked the door and shut it behind me, then locked it. I called the cops on my phone and told the operator what was happening, and she said the police were on their way. It was terrifying to watch the man come right up at the door and try to open it, looking at me through the glass window at the top of the door. He banged on it and was yelling at me. I couldn't hear what he was saying, though. I gave him the finger, and then I think he realized that I was on the phone, and he took off. It was horrifying to be behind the building door and not being able to see what was going on outside. I heard sirens pull into the parking lot about five minutes after he left. I then felt that it was safe to open the door and walk outside. When I got out... The girl was running toward the police, and the truck was nowhere in sight. Turns out that he had lured her to his truck, not really sure how he did that, and then tried to abduct her. Once he stopped banging on the door, he ran back to his truck, threw the girl out, and then sped out of the parking lot to never be seen again. I gave the police my statement, and as far as I know, he was never caught. When I was in high school, I lived in a pretty bad neighborhood. There were a few crappy houses and the area was known for drug use. People live there because the rent is cheap. 
Anyway, we were renting a vacant lot between two dumpy houses, and my sister and I lived in an RV, mostly by ourselves. My mom was in a relationship with an abusive guy who kept her at his house all the time, so we were left by ourselves for days. It wasn't much of an issue since we were old enough to take care of ourselves, being high school aged and all. Anyway, our lot had a road running in front of it and back of it, but the entrance was blocked from one road with a log. That was the road I would go jogging on. I would jog from the blocked driveway to the stop sign at the end. If I made this round trip ten times, it equated to about three miles, so I would be out there every day after school just burning off energy. I started to notice a middle-aged man that would come out to the road sometimes and try to stop me to talk. I always thought it was weird because I was obviously busy and had my headphones on. Sometimes he would just sit on his back porch and smoke and watch me run. Sometimes he would go out to the road and try to stop me. Knowing the probability that he was probably just an old meth head, I did what I could to avoid him. This continued a few days, a week, for about two weeks. And usually after I had passed him two or three times, he would give up trying to get my attention and go back inside his house. But one day he must have caught me at the end of my run, and so had the opportunity to see where I crossed the log and ran to the lot. That's the only explanation I could have for what happened. It was about 12.30 or maybe 1 in the morning, and I was still up watching anime on Netflix when I heard a knock on the RV door. Thinking it was my mom who had potentially come home from her boyfriend's house for the night, I went to the door, but something stopped me. I had no clue what made me stop, but I decided it would be better to call her instead to see if it was her at the door. As I was calling her, there was the knocking again. But not on the door, on the windows, the walls, everywhere. It was finally loud enough to wake up my sister, who was asleep in the back where the bed was. I quickly told her to be quiet. My mom answered, and all I whispered into the phone was, Get over here! Someone's knocking all over the RV! And she hung up the phone and drove over with her boyfriend. I was completely terrified because RVs aren't exactly known for their security, and the lock could have easily been broken. But we just acted like we weren't home for the entire time this person was banging on the RV. When she got there, no one was in the lot, although she was only a few minutes away. There was no knocking after that, and no creepy man. All I can guess was that this guy got spooked enough to not watch me anymore. And that is 100% okay with me. When I was about 9 or 10, my family drove to Las Vegas for a small vacation or something. For whatever reason, when in town, we stopped at a small strip mall to buy something from Kmart or maybe some other store. My parents let me roam around the store by myself, and I was happy to look at some of the toys and movies that I wanted to buy, but then I got to the magazine rack and saw the muscle mags. So I discreetly pull one down and start looking through it, feeling the electric charge of viewing something pretty close to pornography. So I was looking at this mag, and I didn't want my parents to pop up out of nowhere and see me looking at an immodest magazine, especially one with mostly naked men on it. So I was constantly peeking up from the magazine to see if my family was anywhere close when I noticed a 30-something Asian man with glasses looking at me. I continue to peruse the magazine and he steps closer. He asks me, 
Do you like those types of magazine? I simply responded with a, yeah, it's cool. He responded, I've got some more of those at home if you'd like to look at them too. Now, having grown up Mormon and being a good D.A.R.E. student, I knew the strangeness and danger presented in this offer. So I told him something stupid like, uh, no thanks, I'm just waiting for my brother. He took the cue and decided to back off. I stayed to look at the magazine a little longer, afraid that he might tell my parents what I was looking at and quickly left and started looking around for my family. I found them, and they went to stand in line and check out. I decided it was boring, plus I think my mind was still racing at the possibility of that guy telling my parents, or maybe them somehow finding out. So I went out to the parking lot and waited by our family van. While I was standing there by the van, a car pulled up in the parking lot, and the window rolled down. I look over, and it's the guy from the store. He poked his head out and said, Do you need a ride? Is your brother coming? I can take you to him. Luckily, at that moment, I saw my mom coming out of the store with my sisters in tow, so I told him, Nope, my mom is coming right now. He quickly drove off. So, even though it's weird to think about it, I was totally almost abducted. This guy was out there cruising for kids in the middle of the day, in the middle of a crowded store, and he actually engaged me. Ugh, creepy. So, creepy pedo at Kmart? Let's not meet. <laughs>